Let's make a simple yet indulgent carbonara. Here's what you need for your carbonara. Take a screenshot or click the link in the description. Traditional carbonara is made using guanciale, not bacon. So guanciale is from a pig's face. If you don't have guanciale, use pancetta. You're going to cut them to about the width of your finger. Make sure they are no smaller than that because they are going to shrink down a hell of a lot when that fat has rendered out. So they'll be a perfect size when they're nice and crispy and ready to go through your pasta. So they're all cut up. Let's put them in the frying pan. I'm putting them into a dry frying pan over a very, very low heat. This is going to give the fat that is hidden in the guanciale an opportunity to drain out, which is called rendering. Once they're ready, you're going to discard a little bit of that fat because you don't need all of that to go into your pasta, but do keep some of it because it's delicious. Fat equals flavour. Nice. On to the next step. I'm using two whole eggs and six egg yolks. I'm not messing around, but this is for four people. So they go in the bowl along with your two cheeses. We've got pecorino, which is a sheep's cheese. And then we've got parmesan, which is a cow's cheese. You want to whisk them up, and then you're going to finish with a quite a substantial amount of pepper and just a little bit of salt, because obviously the parmesan is salty. That's it, your carbonara sauce is done. While we're waiting, we asked you guys over on Instagram to send through some questions, so fire away. Hmm, I don't think it would be called a carbonara, but it would probably still be very nice. I would use either like crispy fried mushrooms or I saw Mia oh, over on it? Twisted Green making this banana skin bacon before, so you could try that and see if that makes a nice carbonara. Probably wouldn't be as saucy, it might be a bit dry, but if that's the sort of person you are, I can't really stop you, can I? You're gonna batch freeze anything. You shouldn't have to have cream. It's not all about the sauce pooling at the bottom of the thing. It should be about the sauce being all over the pasta. Spaghetti is obviously the classic. I use linguine because it's a little bit thicker and it gives you a bit more like luscious, chewy pasta bite. Ooh, nice! Christ, why do I always get the shit jokes when I do Twisted Plus? All in all, half an hour to 40 minutes. Sure. We're twisted after all. What am I gonna say? You, what do you think I'm gonna say? Yes. If you watch the rest of the video, you'll find out. Genius. That sounds great. 100% yes. If you put cream in a carbonara, it basically becomes a custard. So I suppose you could make a custard carbonara with the eggs and then have some jelly babies or something and then grate white chocolate all over it. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can. I think we should do that. That would be a great Twisted Plus, making carbonara with an ostrich egg. Uh, just one. Good joke, that was a good joke. Time to cook the pasta. So I'm cooking it in a pasta cooker, which means I can lift it out of the water later on, which is cool, you'll see why. Using linguine, which is my favorite type of pasta to use for carbonara, use whichever one you like, if you have a preference. We're gonna cook that in the salty water. When it's al dente, you're gonna take a cup full of pasta water. You know this trick by now, guys, come on. You're gonna take the pasta out, pour it into the bowl with the eggs and the cheese, put the colander thing back, then we're gonna get the egg bowl, put it on top, and we're gonna start stirring it all together to bring it all to a nice sauce. This is a good way of cooking your carbonara because it is indirect, it's less likely to end up with scrambled eggs. And then we're gonna add our guanciale bits with a little bit of their fat left over because fat equals flavor. I'll say that again. It's an important thing to take home from this video. I'm using that pasta water that I took from the saucepan. We're just adding that in. This adds starch, which helps bring the sauces together. You want it to kind of like emulsify and gently cook. Once the carbonara is looking glassy, the sauce is thickened up, and all the guanciale is mixed throughout your beautiful strands of linguine. Take the bowl off the heat. Careful with your little hands, I burnt mine. Use a tea towel, don't be a fool. Start plating up your carbonara, grate it with a little bit of extra parmesan, pecorino, and a tiny touch of black pepper. Oh, Nonna's gonna love it. Okay, this is my super easy, super delicious carbonara, the crispy guanciale. Those egg yolks have given it this beautiful golden hue. It's so simple, but so delicious. Let's give it a try. Such an easy midweek dinner. Knock it up on the weekend. You've got some friends around, some eggs to use up, some pecorino, some parmesan in the fridge. It's only got five ingredients, so you don't really need to break the bank. It's impressive, yet simple. It's classy, yet understated. 
best carbonara I've ever made. So if you enjoyed watching this video, please let us know by subscribing and let us know what you want to see next. Let us know everything. Let us know. Just let us know. Let us know. Let it snow. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.